I feel like in able for you to kind of reset everything, you really have to lose everything. But fashion is tricky in a sense. It's a business, but it's very personal. It has so much to do with who you are. Fashion Week's supposed to be fun. Yeah. It's not supposed to be like, rah. When I go to Fashion Week, there's one thing for sure that I don't want to be called. Two things. Yeah. I don't want to be called a VIC and okay. I don't want to be called a celebrity. A lot of local celebrities are now following your footsteps. How do you feel about that? The honest truth, I... So what is your next move? Welcome, Har. Hi. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you in our first episode. Uh, uh, yeah, podcast. I'm, I'm yeah. so excited to be here. It's actually my very first podcast as well. So, really? Yeah, and I'm pretty talkative, so I hope I don't overshare. <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky. This is my first uh, ever podcast too. And, you know, I'm quite nervous. But um, I'm very excited uh, to talk to you today yes. because, you know, we've been working together for a long time. Yes. And, you know, uh, there's really rare moments that we get to sit down and exactly. really, you know, talk. Yes. And this is one of them. So, yeah, you know, no yeah. need to be nervous because we always, you know, we get to see each other also. The rapport and the yeah. bond has always been there. Hopefully, I survive this first you will. episode. You I hope to, hope to survive. Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Hart, I wanted to start off our conversation by looking into the past. Okay. Because um, I wanted to ask you about, you know, your fashion inspirations. Growing up, like who did you admire or who did you look up to? Well, well, when I was growing up, I think the first brush of anything fashion would be naturally my mom, mm -hmm. but really more my dad. Okay. Yeah, because my dad was always fashionable. Uh -huh. He was so funny in a way, but vain with his hair. His, I remember he had this like boy London jacket and he had... A, a walk-in closet. My mom didn't have... My mom had a shelf. He had a walk-in closet wow. with large perfume bottles uh -huh. that are for display. You know the yeah. ones in the store? He's a collector. Yeah. So yeah okay. In the olden days, I yeah. think they would still sell the big perfume bottles. Uh -huh. So he, he was the one. Yeah. That. So he had trunks and he was just super stylish. So I think earlier when I was younger, I would see them mm -hmm. and it was quite natural for them to dress up. Yeah. And my mom was always just very elegant and mm -hmm. classic. So... Growing up, it would be them. Would um, be them. In my yeah. teens, it would probably, um, of course, it'd be the Spice Girls for the platform shoes. Okay. And that shows your age. Yes, though. and they're, they're in the Philippines. Yet people <laughs> yeah. are people who are the only ones that sold those platform yeah. shoes. Yeah. And of course, a big, um, I think for me, uh, would be Clueless, Alicia Silverstone. I yeah. mean, that was really my time. Clueless. Yeah. Um, what's that movie? Uh, she. She's all, She's that. all that. Oh okay. my god! Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that kind of vibe was yeah. my my vibe. When did you start developing your own style? Because you mentioned yeah. those like clueless, yes. you yeah. were inspired by that. You know, it's funny because the the earliest memory of me when it comes to fashion, would, yeah. I remember two major things. I was watching Belinda Carlisle's music video, okay. and I think she was wearing like an off shoulder. She was singing on the stairs and. I remember getting my mom's like floral skirt. It was like a boho skirt and I made it into like an off shoulder. Top. Yeah, I made it into a top and yeah. I really loved it. <laughs> and the second one is I got her, she had turquoise shoes that I wore. But this one was pretty tragic because I fell down the stairs. I hit my head on the glass and oh, I had no. seven stitches on my eye. But, Accident. Yeah, but that's why yeah. those two are my top memories of like, you know, starting to kind of experiment yeah. with fashion. Yeah. But it was really when I started showbiz because back the then, time, yeah, yeah, back yeah. then we had no stylist. Precisely. We didn't even have, there was no such thing as budgets for, for what your shoot or it would be provided. Wardrobe you, yeah, you outfits, provided right? your own your outfit. Own. So basically that time you were sort of like styling your yes, self, right? Yeah. I did my hair, I did my makeup, I had my caboodles. <laughs> it was purple or yeah. with glitters on it uh -huh. you know I had all the sizes by the way yeah. um, I had that I would even you know like I remember I used to go to this store on in San Francisco on Haight Street 
Hey, and it was Ash called Berry, X Generation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I had flare jeans that I wanted to recreate this Britney Spears look uh -huh. um, from I'm Not a Girl, Not Yet a Woman kind of cowboy look. Yeah. And I got like these lace that I brought, I don't know from where, I think it was in Park Square or something, <laughs> and Swarovski's. And yeah. I glued it on my jeans. Oh my. You and bedazzled yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> I bedazzled it myself. Okay. And for my very first for photo shoot, it was. Um, talent center at that time. Okay. I, I had a like red shirt with a Chong Sam patch and a Chong Sam wrist, wrist band, band? Okay. that I stitched on myself and I made myself. Oh wow. Yeah. So, so I was really into it. Yeah, early in on you were really yes. creative and styling yourself. And during that time you you were probably in your twenties. Right? During that time yeah. I wasn't. Wow. <laughs> I was already no I was ten though. No. I was I think 17, 18. Okay, all right. And that's so, how I got the role Missy because like, who is this colorful girl? Because yeah. back then it wasn't, you know, fashion and being loud with your choices. Uh -huh. I think it was just only in Hong Kong that you'll see, you yeah. know, like, like colored lenses. The trends or yes. what they're wearing in the street, exactly. right? But here, yeah. parang it wasn't yet. Yeah. So I looked like a character actress. So the <laughs> hence Missy of Jimmy was but born. But I think like um, you stand out because of that. I mean, because it's rare that they get to see a lot of trends being, um, I guess, translated yeah. over TV mm -hmm. or in the streets compared to now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, during that time, because you were younger, yeah. maybe in your 20s, how would you describe your style? Because you were talking about this persona for TV, like you'd wear colorful yes. outfits, you'd be dazzling. But as a person. Like, as a person? Yeah. I mean, like your your own person. What was your personal like during? You know, your honestly, I was really over the top ever since. I think that's why up to now I feel like I'm misunderstood. <laughs> okay. Because even in school, you'd yeah. see me wearing a choker. Yeah. And I was the outcast. I was always bullied. Why I didn't have because zero you friends liked to dress up, or I you think were I unique. I them the the off the wrong, wrong way, way. Okay. and I totally get it now because I still do that. I I have that vibe still really? now. Okay. Um, and if, well, whatever, we're not going to go out. We, they can't do anything. Yeah. If you can't win the world. But I always had like a feathery pen. Yeah. You know, I was always that girl. And it's sometimes irritating to see someone like that. But because I feel like I was so naive and so innocent that I didn't really think about what people thought of my style. And that's what made it so fun at that time, which is challenging these days. Because when you're young, you're not too conscious about what yeah, the world thinks. You don't thinks. care so yeah, much. Yeah. yeah. So it's that was my yourself. personal style. Uh -huh. I was always out there, but I wasn't out there for anyone else. I was out there for myself for to yourself. feel good. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's nice. That's nice to hear. So how did your style evolve from 20s? Because like… Yeah. You know, it has a lot to do with… I feel like not exactly for me per se trends. It yeah. was really more of like the vibe. Or my life, where my life was at at that at time. time. Okay. Like from super bubbly, I all of a sudden got into like the whole boho because I was dating a surfer. You oh, know, like that, that time. That time. So you kind so, of imbibe the of lifestyle. Of course, or the vibe. you know. Okay. And I feel like that's also <laughs> because I'm an actress. Okay. So I'm in a sense, especially when I was younger, had that whole like chameleon stage yes. where put me here, I'll blend in. Yeah. Until I, you know, eventually, maybe like in my late 20s, yeah. I kind of found myself mm -hmm. not with according to, you know, who I was dating yeah. or not according to where I was or at in my life. But really, like, it really has to do with experiences in my life mm -hmm. where I feel good about myself wearing this. I don't yeah. care about, of course, I care a little bit <laughs> a at little. the time. Yeah. Um, and so I would wear a certain certain things a certain way. Because of myself. And that would be probably my late 20s. Okay. But I would really say that it would be today. Mm -hmm. um, because also somewhere along the way, you know, you meet and surround yourself. And some voices are a little bit too loud than yourself. So okay. you kind of lose your authority for yourself or your voice for yourself. That you kind of cave, you, cave in. Yeah, you cave like, in to the likes or you cater to the likes of other people and not really what you want. You want. So now I feel like I'm really where I want to be and I wear what I want because I am who I want to be. That's that's good. I, I yeah. like that because I feel like at this stage in your life, you know yourself mm -hmm. well and you just want to, you know, like live out um, yeah. even your fashion expression, yeah. right? And yeah. you don't care so much what other people say. Yeah. Or there's no formula really. There's no more formula. Yeah, yeah. especially and, fashion today. Uh -huh. the bad. There's no more, I mean, there's a trend, but yeah. it's a mix of yesterday, today, and maybe tomorrow. You know? <laughs> I like that. But like, would you say that there are fundamentals to your style? Like, would you say that you would always gravitate towards certain towards pieces? Certain, or, yes. 
Yeah, yeah. super. Okay. Um, whether that's like now, I feel like I I like muted colors. You'll always have like a pop of something. Okay. Um, I still I still like to you know bring with me that little girl mm-hmm. uh, inside of me. So you'd have like a pop of like a fun bag. Yeah. Like accessory. I, I, yeah. I'm, oh, I always shoe. gravitate to fun items mm. or a certain shoe or yeah. a certain clip like yeah. a croissant shaped clip yeah. you know i'll still have that you still have that mm-hmm. because that's like part because of that's, you. that's just really yeah <laughs> okay part one of the most um quoted golden rules of style comes from coco chanel um before leaving the house she said look in the m- mirror and remove one accessory so what is your golden rule of style My golden rule of style would be, how does this make you feel today? Okay. So it's not about the price tag. It's not about how high the heel is anymore. Before (laughs) that used to matter. Yeah. It's really, how do you feel about yourself wearing Mm -hmm. this? Because for me, if I feel good, I will look good. Yeah. If I don't, like for say, if you have like such a sad life, no matter what, you look like a Christmas tree with all the diamonds on your your body. But, but you're you not look. happy. You won't look good. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a certain shine that's missing. So yeah. How do you feel good? If does it make you feel good? So that's how you yes. dress up now. And that's, that's how I dress up now. That's my number one. That's great. So Hart, you are undoubtedly a global fashion icon. Okay, I, I, I'm declaring that. <laughs> you have made your mark. So how does it feel to be a global fashion icon? Because you are. The honest truth. Oh. I really uh, I don't understand. It. What like, do you mean? First, I mean, I'm really thankful. Like, honestly, I just have to say, I'm really thankful whenever people label you as, as such or whatever. Mm-hmm. But for me, I'm, I try to take myself away from titles or like numbers or mm-hmm. I try before it used to matter. Yeah. But now I don't because it's so much pressure. Like I entered fashion yeah. week or I entered, I do what I do is because I really like it. Um, but I'm just so flattered. So thanks. I, I, it, it's nice to be acknowledged as such. Especially, you know, I've been working for a really long time. For me, eh? I yeah. mean, not as long as other people. I never thought that, you know, after tw- like 24 years, years that I would, and now 26, that mm-hmm. I would even, you know, matter. So pretty cool. But, but, no, <laughs> but that's amazing. How long have you been doing fashion um, fashion Week, I started around 2015-16. Okay, all right. So it took a while. It wasn't an, uh, it wasn't at all an easy journey when I look back. But at the time, I really didn't do it for work. Um, I didn't do it at all to create any kind of buzz around it. I was just bored with my life. <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah, okay, I was just really time. bored okay. with my life. And I, I was see. also like, I felt like I... You know, I wasn't, I didn't matter here. I, you know, like, I wasn't really, um, how do I say, like, superstarish kind of artista that mm-hmm. a lot of people would see me and watch my movie type of thing. So uh-huh. I felt like it was pretty much over for me. I see. So, okay. Yeah. I want to um, zone in on that later. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of ground to cover yeah. with that. But I also wanted to let you know that um, you've been on the cover of Mega 10 times already. I heard. Right? And then you also, you are a cover girl of international titles such as um, Bazaar and Icon and most recently Vogue uh, Philippines. Congratulations on that. Oh my God. How does it feel? I didn't, honestly, I didn't think that was coming. (laughs) (laughs) You know, whenever people ask you like, what is your dream or is there a dream? Yeah. And you know, a lot of, you know, would say I'd like to be the cover of this and that. Yeah. I, of course, as a little girl, I always wanted to be. Why not? I used to like, you know, put makeup on the cover of a girl's face. I used to like paint Vogue magazines and like put lipstick really? on her when I was young. Yeah. You were really, uh, and but the thing is, I, yeah, yeah, but I didn't really, yeah, I didn't really think that I would. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm not the type of person to really expect mm-hmm. anything. So it was really like. Even the day that we shot, I said, oh, it's not going to make it. You know, whatever. Okay, really? Yeah, yeah. So no expectation. I mean, no, like, no, no. you were just there to do, yeah, you know, a, to a, do a great a job. Shoot. Yeah, to do a shoot with your Yeah, usual, and with I your really usual. didn't expect. I, see, I okay. only wanted to believe if it really came out. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. So it that's did. amazing, so right? I'm super, like, wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. You know, we saw you all over Milan and Paris Fashion Week. 
How was the experience like for you? I know you've been doing it for a long time and it might have been different before with, you know, like maybe this year, 2023. Yeah. Right? Um, this year, I kind of, because it's, we, I kind of know already the flow more okay. or less. Yeah. Um, but it, it's nice because I feel like, you know, I'm, I brought my team there okay. and I brought like profession, professionals that, you know, have their roles Specific fixed. Specific roles, yes. yeah. And I, I'd like to thank my husband for, you know, being super supportive these days. Yeah. Like he is part of the micro mini management I know. of He's every little. He's very present and visible. Very present. Yeah. So it was nice that I kind of had that help because uh -huh, before support system. I really yeah. did everything on my own. On your own. Um, I did all the creative directing of what my hair was going to be. Yeah. Even where the clip was going to be put, you yeah. know. If I could do it myself, I'd do it myself. Yeah. But lately, I have learned to kind of let go and just do what Delegate. I need to do. And, you know, yes, of course, still be the creative director of everything we do. But kind of enjoy the process because it became work. And I don't want it to be work. It'll be work. And I understand it's work. But I want to... I want to love it still. Still enjoy yeah. every moment. Exactly. Because yeah. like, I feel like if you're um, doing uh, everything, you kind of lose the, I guess, the joy yeah, in yeah. doing what you yes. love. And then you start to resent it or you yes, become exactly. tired, right? Yeah, especially I would actually do, before Isa, like Isa's my stylist now, she would help me stitch Shout and out everything. To Shout Isa. out to Isa's SIM card. <laughs> Hello. Um, she yeah. would help me stitch and stuff. Yeah. But before she came, I would stitch myself. I would put on the extra buttons. Yeah. I would, you know, do all of that. I liked it actually. Okay. But meaning to say doing everything, I was also doing my statistics, like my numbers, if my reels were doing yeah. well. And with the last um, fashion week, I had like issues of like, you know, theories like shadow banning and all of that. Well, what is that? Can you just... So basically, yeah. it's a known, it's not a, it's a known thing, but people, but it's not acknowledged. But um, especially in Asia or in the Philippines per se, it can be like a hired third company okay. that what you do is they have, it's like a political game. Okay. So let's say you're, you're, if you have a rival or somebody, okay. mm -hmm. they will hire a company that would make random uh, like Instagram follow you Accounts. all at once. Yeah. That's fine if you get the follow. Sometimes they don't even follow. If you follow, okay, why not? My, 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 my followers will be higher. But yeah. They basically just like flood your Instagram mm -hmm. with random, po like random posts of, um, I don't know. Comments? Comments, or? porn, uh, anything, oh, crypto. that's not related to you. That's not related to you, but all content. at once, like 100 posts, 100 yeah. tags. Yeah. And then um, Instagram will kind of, the, the AI will like detect, that. detect the anomaly that's happening and they'll silence your Instagram. Okay. Because so, they think there's like something weird Yes, there's weird something that's, that's happening. Or like... So it's it's a, it's a new like strategy now. Okay. So at that time, I was handling that and I didn't like it at yeah. all. I'm so, sure you were pressured in a little I bit. I was definitely annoyed, pressured. I was maybe? pressured. I was annoyed. I yeah. was figuring out how to take it out. Yeah. I was, you know, doing my own reels. But then going back to letting other people help me getting, you know, my team to do what they need to yeah. do. I just need to make my content kick ass. Yeah. I just needed to perform with what I was doing and love what I was doing because 5 million views, 10 million views compared to 100,000 views, it's fine because my only target in that, in that audience was just one person. Mm. That, a sad person that wanted to be inspired. Yeah. That was my only... That's enough for you. That was enough for yeah. me. Yeah. That was my only goal before. So that's why I'm saying this time, what makes, different, what makes it different is I kind of was able to let go. That's good heart because that's also challenging. I mean, being a creative and focusing maybe on your content and the storytelling and how you want it to be, that should be the heart of what yes, you're doing, right? Yes. But when you have to deal with, you know... The um, business side of things. Yeah, and maybe those um, headaches and those mm -hmm. unnecessary negative things. Exactly. It kills the creative spirit. Super. Right? So, Super. So I'm glad that you're able to sort of, have you resolved it? Yes, okay. I've resolved it okay. because before, you know, certain situations started to make it like a competition. Mm -hmm. Fashion week was never a competition. Yeah. Everybody is welcome to enjoy yeah. that world. Yeah. It's not a competition. It's experience. It's right? not about numbers. Okay. It's about being yourself mm. and expressing yourself, being your most authentic self. Yeah. And that's it. So... I go back again, 
not because it's my work, not because it's for business, not because I want to be famous or yeah. be a fashion global whatever. <laughs> it's because of when I started, I loved it so much. Yeah. And I'm back to that now. Yeah. So that is your um, That calling. is where I am. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. And hopefully you don't get to experience things like that anymore. I'm sure it'll happen. But, it'll but ha- it if, doesn't matter. If yeah. it will happen, you know what to do. Yes. yes. <laughs> but can you just, you know, take us in the beginning. How did it really start? When did you decide, you know what? I'm going to Fashion Week. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to go there. I don't know. Um, enjoy, watch the yeah. shows, shop. Yeah. What was really the motivation for you? How did it start? Okay, so I feel like in able for you to kind of reset everything, you really have to lose everything. And I felt at that specific time in my life was quite pivotal because with my career here in the Philippines, I felt like there was nothing else I can give. Like no growth. Yeah, there was no growth. I didn't think it was it for me. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that, you know, I was accepted to be a certain kind of breed in the industry that I feel like you have to be a certain kind of breed for you to make sales in the movie house Mm -hmm. or, you know, and I wasn't, I was never that. I felt like I was always the odd man out, (laughs) you know, like I was too kikai, I was too bubbly, I was never kawawa looking, you know. Um, (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it was my fault because I would have a telenovela where Naglalaba ako pero naka-Cartier love bracelet. But you so can't you know, help it. That's you. <laughs> and I was yeah. it was a non-negotiable yeah. because if you keep removing yeah. the love the, key, the, the love car- Cartier love bracelet, the screws are going to get ruined. <laughs> so taguta long sleeve all the way even yeah. if it was sunny in the Philippines, okay. you know. So it was my fault, but <laughs> I felt like I didn't fit in. Yeah. And so, you know, because I wasn't liking it so much, I felt that it was declining for me and I was unhappy because at the end of the day I'm still an artist, yeah, you know? You have to do um, what you like. Yeah, an artist in an odd world where I don't belong. Mm-hmm. So I remember I was watching YouTube and I came across Mira Duma. Oh, Mira Duma. This Mira Russian Duma. She's a Russian influencer. influencer. She was an editor. Yeah. And, and she, she was really... e-commerce, I think, Exactly. Also. She, she did bureau. She, she actually bureau, gave birth yeah. to bureau 24-7. Uh-huh. And I said, oh my God, I want to be something like her. Okay. She's smart. She's petite. <laughs> like you. She, yes. Yeah. In a world of all of these like beautiful, tall, tall blondes. Model she was types. This, yeah, yeah. She was this petite, yes. charming, creative. And she had dark hair like you. Yeah. She was unique. <laughs> yeah. And she was very expressive with her fashion and mm-hmm. her, you know, the way her art and creativity. And I said, I really like that. I really, truly do. Yeah. And I would watch her like, you know, street style videos on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, you know, is there any way, how can, in the world can I get to that, yeah. you know? And then I, I remember I, I hit a wall because it's like, oh no, I don't know anything. I don't know how. Yeah, how? And then I was so sad because how? Not, no way. So I started to paint. You started to paint. I started okay. to paint. Is this your artist era? Yes, this is my artist era. And I really loved it. I really was able to tell a story of not because of how I looked, but it was like the diary of my soul. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. And when I translated that and I put it on Hermes bags, Bags. that's That's when it changed for me. I see, okay. I got tagged by this. I got, you know, introduced to this person. A lot of different like rare accounts are following me. And then I remember I was able to, you know, um, I, I met Michael Cost. He was the PR of, um, of um, a celebrity handle of, of Hermes. And he said, when will you be in Paris? I'd love to meet you. And I was like, what? And I was also an Hermes fan. So I remember I had a friend then. I didn't know how to book flights. And my husband was not, you know, so keen <laughs> on me, you know, yeah. going to Paris to meet or mess yeah. uh, PR like what's that it yeah. was like unheard of at that time at the time okay. but I did it yeah I you went decided there. you wanted yes. to go I went there I met the Hermes guy I was at a coffee shop I was beside the president of Couture and there were people looking at my bag and all of that and I remember I met someone that worked for um at the time a brand new uh, a new brand that was about to reopen that was bought by Todd's company, which is Scaparelli. Oh, Scaparelli. Yes. And they said, what are you doing this and that? You know, we'd love you to attend the first show. Okay. Oh, yeah. So 
And then I, I remember I had to leave. I came back and I attended one of the first shows of Scaparelli. First Scaparelli. Yeah, okay. and okay. just alone in that show, yeah. I met so many people. You made contacts. And yeah, and then they said, oh, I love your bag. It was all about my bag. First, it was yeah, all about, it was about the bag. painted yeah. bag. And then they said, oh, come now. I'd love to have lunch with you. And then boom, that's what happened. And then a big factor also was Kevin Kwan. Mm -hmm. But Kevin Kwan, I met him. He saw my bag. Yeah. He wrote about it in New York Times. Also in and Harper's, I think. He got me for the Harper's Bazaar feature. And because of the Harper's Bazaar feature, that was my full entrance to all the shows in Paris because of Kevin Kwan. I remember when Kevin Kwan contacted me. I was going through a really difficult time. Okay. I just lost my twins yeah, at that time. I remember that. So, yeah, remember and then that. he told me that he would like to. And I was like, you know, I'm... I don't know if I'm the person you're looking for, but he's like, no, Hart, we want you on it. And when Kevin Kwan took over, he introduced me to all these people. Yeah. And that's when they, you know, everything started to happen for me. For you. Okay, with all these things happening, were you financing yourself? I mean, like a trip to Paris doesn't, you know, it costs an arm and a leg. Yes. And like your mm -hmm. outfit and where you're going to stay. Yeah. Um. Well, because I wasn't so much of a person that would have vacations. I didn't really think about it like of financing myself because it was a business. It was really more of, I'm going to take a vacation. I really love Experience. what I'm doing. Take a break. I was just very blessed in a way to be at the right place at the right time and to be guided by Kevin Kwan. Yeah. And, and then all these, yeah, fascinating, like all these fascinating people. people like met. I met also, this is the crazy part. I met. Christian Louboutin at a party. Oh, and in when Paris. we met at a party, yeah. no, in the Philippines. In the Philippines, yes. here, yes, because he visits often. Yes, as well. he visits often, yeah. and we bonded, and you know, we clicked so much that you know, in Paris, he gave me his passcode to his house. house. I, I, I guess, just put on the passcode. Yeah. I spent Christmas with him. Oh, one time. amazing! Okay. He called pasta You're for that me. that close. <laughs> yes, and of course, I don't post it because yeah, it's you know, parang weird, na man, yeah. right? but. You know, like I spent yeah. Christmas with him. He cooks pasta for me. Yeah. Those and connections. Right, yeah, are... and it's because of, you know, these angels that I've met that are, you know, like kind of archangels in the industry that, you know, really paved way to where mm -hmm. I am. And supported yeah. you. And supported really me. Empowered you. And introduced me. And, you know, and they'd always say, you know, this she's such a cute petite girl, but she's, <laughs> you know, like. Yeah. And they really helped me a lot. So hard when you were doing this. Um, when did you decide to really, you know, pursue and do this uh, full time? Um, I guess when I was, you know, like invited to a lot of shows or when you know, certain companies would really like to meet me. It became like I had to pursue it as a career because the business side of it, walang tatagal. It's not like a well that money is yeah. never ending, you know. Yeah. It kind of has to like pay circulate yeah. and pay for itself. Pay for itself. So yeah. um, that's when I had to, you know, come up, like put up a company in France. I had to like, had to be legit because the money was coming in from there. I mean, it's not anymore like, oh, for fun. Yeah. You have to pay for your taxes here. You have to pay for that, declare that, you know. So it has to be at some point and it has, it's a business. Do you at remember some, the year that you decided? At some point, uh, it would probably around three, four years, three ago. years ago, okay. like seriously, seriously. Mm -hmm. And about two years ago that I really, I went for it. And I remember two years ago, that was, I was in a chapter in my life where I was completely alone. Uh -huh. Like I learned how to travel by myself. Yeah. I had so many people turn their backs on me because I had a tough life at that time personally. It was a really like one of my lowest times. And that's when I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. Um, it's my passion and I'm going to thrive and I'm going to really, you know, go for it. And this is going to be my job. It's amazing. Like when you're at your lowest point in your life and yes. then you decide to, you know, will yourself to yes. just challenge yourself. To, exactly. You know, I'll do this. You know why? My husband, that? my husband would tell me when you reach rock bottom, yeah. it's actually comforting to know that you've reached rock bottom because yes. you hit the very lowest point. Yeah. There's nowhere else to go but up. but up. So you can have comfort in the fact that na yon. Yeah. this is this the is hardest the worst, part. The worst now, what are you going to do next? It's yeah. only going up. Okay. And when I reached rock bottom and everybody was gone, 
that's when there's nobody else that's going to save yourself but yourself. And I'm going to freaking go for my dreams with nobody's help because I know I can do it. Mm -hmm. And that's when it all happened for me. That's amazing. I hope like a lot of people also, you know, like um, see that as an inspiration. I hope (laughs) because, you know, what you the question you're saying that they say the glitz, the glamour and all of that. It's not I didn't enter for as a job. I entered because I loved it in the beginning and then it became a job. Mm -hmm. But it's not just a job because you want to be famous. Yeah. A business business like companies and all that's a business business. But fashion is tricky in a sense. It's a business, but it's very personal. It has so much to do with who you are. I never thought you're this strong willed. Because like people <laughs> think, oh, Heart's very feminine. She's splashed mm. and she's nice. But I'm you super. have this fire in you. Now, yes. <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of people threw fires up and sticks and stones at me. Lily, <laughs> oh, 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 you But you, you know. let them burn, not you. <laughs> I let it. I let them do that. I allowed, you know, but you have to allow yeah. certain things. I mean, It's not that you had to allow. You learn. You learn to fight for yourself. And when you fight for yourself, you know your worth when you get out of that hole. And I'm going to fight for myself. So it's all intricate. It's not just fashion, guys. It's about your identity. So, yeah, we're just here to witness that. I know. Let's see what will (laughs) happen. Let's see what happens. So, Hart, how do you define what you do? And um, what would be the proper term to describe this calling or this job? (laughs) <laughs> Honestly, I'm also very much confused. And I feel like a lot of the brands that I work with are confused. Is she a celebrity? Is she a KOL? Is she an influencer? Is she a guest? Yeah. So we really don't know. Yeah. I feel like there are a lot of emerging people like me, though. That's a, a new breed in a sense. Or a multi-hyphenate. Like I don't you know. Can, yeah. I don't understand because when I go to Fashion Week, there's one thing for sure that I don't want to be called. Two things. Yeah. I don't want to be called a VIC and okay. I don't want to be called a celebrity. A celebrity, okay. I don't like. Yeah. For for people who don't know what VIC means. VIC is like a very important client. Client, okay. So, so, so I don't want that okay. scrap. Yeah. And I don't want to, number one, I don't want to be celebrity. Okay. So we should stop using that when we describe you. I know. Because, it, because <laughs> if you're a celebrity, yeah. Yeah. you're only there for a chapter of your time. You're not there as a fashionista, as a natural yeah. You know, who cool loves girl. Yes. the art of yes. fashion. And you're not yeah. there as that. Yeah. You're a, you're there according to your numbers. So mm-hmm. somebody's going to replace you one day. I don't want to sit on that seat. I'd rather sit on the third row and I'd sit there for many years mm-hmm, mm-hmm. than sit in front and shift from time to time. So I'm in for the long run. So I guess it's what you call a lifestyle. A lifestyle. Yeah. It's, like it's, it's the life you choose. Yeah. But you have to pay for your bills at the end of the day. So you got to profit somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So there has to be balance, of yes. course, with work and like play. Because you said that, you yeah. know, this is your joy. You enjoy it. Yes. But at the same time, it is your calling. Yeah. There's a business side to it. Definitely. It's very complex. Right? It's very complex. But luxury is expensive. Mm-hmm. So you can't just have luxury and not earn you yeah. know, at the same it time. Make sense. You have to be smart. Yeah. About you have it. to be and a strategic. smart fashionista. Exactly. A smart fashionista. Yeah. Okay. So, can you share maybe the challenges that you face through this journey? Um, I, there's a lot of challenges, I guess. That's why every time I, I get a seat for a brand, yeah. I'm just very grateful that I have that seat because it's hard to get that seat. Like a lot of people come as press. A lot of celebrities come as press. And that's hard if you come as press because you don't sit. You don't, you're not given that special seat. Not the special seat per se. Front row, yeah. But it's a special seat. The brands won't be able to get to know you as she's heart or she's pee wee. Yeah. They only know you press. Press. Not necessarily this, a name. Yeah, yeah. You just get the bracelet. But if you love fashion, if I know you, you should know me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It so should be personal. It should be personal. So that's a challenge for me. Mm-hmm. And it's a hard challenge to introduce yourself because the moment you introduce yourself wrongly, They'll never get to know you. Then you'll never matter. Or there's like this uh, not so good impression. And exactly. And they don't pursue you or yeah. you guys don't have a relationship. Exactly. But give it to the real journalists. Yeah. That Those deserve that seat. And the ones that will write. The ones that will edit. The ones that will cover and work on that story. That person should be flown in and be given that seat. Because that's, just, that's for them. You get it? Wait. So Pee Wee. <laughs> yes. 
You're, you should be there. I will Chara. be there next year. Don't worry. Yes. I don't want to take anyone's seat. Yes. Give it to who deserves it. How are you able to balance your work and personal demands here in the Philippines and still travel all over the world attending fashion weeks? Okay, so I'd like you do to, have a life here. Yes, I have a life here and I ha- I'm married. Yes, okay. <laughs> Let me just put that there. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I'd like to uh, say hello to Ira Lasaka, Madame Hi, Ira. Ira. She's Who's the one today? that handles all at once. My schedule that I'm able to go here, yeah. I'm able to go there and everywhere. And I, I don't miss a single thing in okay. life. That's great. Um, so it's really a, a balance. And again, it's so important that you work with the right people. people. Yeah. And that the, your your loved ones also are there to understand and be supportive. Support because me. if not, yeah. there would be no marriage. I you know? know? I think there has to be an understanding. Has on to be. Really like the dreams and yes. what, the passions. Yes. What you guys want to pursue. Yeah. And have also your own life. Mm-hmm. And be able to support that person. Yes, and, exactly. Um, empower them. Because you have to, whether it happens for you or not, you have to give it a try. And now you have to give 100% all your heart to something that you want to give because you don't want to have regrets and you don't also want your husband to have regrets that I didn't because if you, she doesn't she's not able to do it and she has her doubts it'll go back to you anyway yeah. so support her yeah, so should. it's the same it so goes both I'd like ways. to say thank you to everybody that really okay. truly gives way a lot of local celebrities are now following your footsteps how do you feel about that? the honest truth I I'm very happy. Okay. The honest truth. I mean, a lot of people, that's the only thing I don't like is that because it's a lo- the local celebs are there, some people's mentality is really messed up here, I must say. And Filipino to Filipino, we know the crab mentality yeah. exists. Yeah. And when I was doing Fashion Week and I was working with, you know, the other celebrities or influencers from different regions, I never felt like I was in a rat race. Okay. I never felt there was competition anything, or something. Nothing. Not because at there's all. this is just fashion week, mm-hmm. guys. This is not like the fight of your life. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like it's supposed to be chill, enjoy, yeah. but be yourself. That's the only thing I don't like. And I get it, but it gets nasty. So I'm here to support whoever goes. But you know, we all have to do it the right way. Okay. Like Anne Curtis, for example, she's really nice. And she even said, I hope to see you again. And she fashion. messaged you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's cute, yeah. you know. But I don't like it when people, other people are sneaky about it. Like, mm-hmm. what is like the whole keeping it a secret? Para mi pasabog? Like, yeah. guys, it's just fashion week. It's yeah. not a Hollywood movie. Yeah. You know? So yeah. that's the thing. It's just the mentality. Because you know that for me, it's never a competition. Yeah. For others, it's never a competition. But for some, Apparently, it is. It is. Okay. And for some, it's nasty. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that vibe. Like, yeah. I've been doing it for such a long time. I hate nasty vibes from yeah. people. And it's nakakataint. It, you, fashion week's supposed to be fun. Yeah. It's not supposed to be like, rah, you or know? Controversial. Yeah, like, it's like not. Do you feel like there's a lot of also negative things in social media? and People create drama? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely from whether that's real people or... Uh, fake accounts okay. you know yeah. um, I think everybody should just chill yeah. like you know everybody should chill because everybody it's like they discover the pot of gold is there mm-hmm. so everybody's like racing towards that place which come on guys let's race towards that place but honestly the pot of gold isn't just made by one company there's a lot yeah. so there's yeah. room for everyone there's, there's no need everyone. to you know, have tried to kick somebody out of a show because that yeah. happened to me no. in the last fashion week yes Definitely, I had. What to, happened, Hart? I would want to hear about this. I had to talk to certain this. PRs okay. to say that no, somebody was calling and saying I'm not able to attend because another person's gonna attend because she, this person can't. Mima, there's a lot like a of slot was taken. Yeah, like for example, okay. they would say that they represent me, but they don't. Okay, so that's you weird. know, I had to do a lot of clearing up, mm-hmm. and that's what got me stressed, which yeah. is unnecessary. But you know, now. I, I was able to fix that okay. and I'm glad that my husband was there and also like my agents, like I I have out. three agents now. Amazing. Okay. Um to 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 fix and to everything. verify everything uh-huh. that that doesn't happen to me, that I won't be taken out of a show because they said that I wasn't allowed to attend or something like that. So there's like a lot of those things that happens. It starts to become political. Yeah. Did so, that happen 
this year only? Mm-hmm. This year only. So recently, because you've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. And I'd assume at this time, yeah. everything's Yeah, so like, like now, like, for example, they know now who the point person is and all of that. Because, you know, but I get it. Everybody's, I guess, too excited about it and all of that. So it kind of gets messy at some point. But, um, like, those things can happen. So that's, you know, you really, again, it's for fun. Again, it's a business. But you really just have to, you know, um, plan things out properly, yeah. do things properly. So there's like a harmonious, like smooth way of everything. I'm glad that you're taking this li- lightly or like mm-hmm. you've already sort of um, made, well, I, I've taken made it peace lightly. about it. Yeah. yeah. It, when I was there, I was a little bit like very like complex and confused yeah. with what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm glad also that it kind of pushed me to, all right, wait. So maybe it's time for me to kind of change things up away in a way and go to the next step. I went 10 steps ahead. So I fixed a lot of like corporate stuff, legal stuff. I got all my cards like set perfectly. And now it's okay. It's going to be smoother. But that's, that's just, it's like in any business, there's always going to be like that. Like issues or whatever. And in, in whatever. any company, there's always going to be politics. Yeah. Just always have to prepare. I'm just so, so surprised to hear that because, you know, at your level and, you mm-hmm. know, with your, I guess, um, tenure in the industry, you wouldn't have to face things like that. But, oh, but, but you I did guess, recently. Yeah. And, you know, even like in school, somebody's going to face, I mean, in every world. Like maybe bullying or some kind of. Yeah. Okay. There's always going to be that. But. You know, I'm glad that I really went through fire. I'm a tough cookie. It'll be hard for you, you to break are. me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, take my video, put it out, whatever yeah. you want to dissect, how you want to present me to the world as who I am and this and that to whatever. You know how people, that's that's how a business is. The body, yeah. Black propaganda, whatever. You could do whatever, set my house on fire, but you will not break me yeah. again. That's amazing, yeah. Hart. I mean, better watch out. I'm still going to walk in my couture dress. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You as a representative, a Filipino who's in the uh, global fashion stage, um, what do you think that um, makes you stand out? Or what do you think uh, makes Filipinos stand out in the global world, in the global stage? Okay, so this is something that I want to say to everyone who wants to go and everyone who's already going. Mm-hmm. As Filipinos, you are already unique. You're super charming. You don't need to lift a finger. Be yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't try to be anybody else okay. but yourself. Okay. You, When you come there, opportunities will automatically open up uniquely for you. Not necessarily the same what the other one has, yeah. but it will come. Yeah. Just be Filipino. Because Filipinos, they have their charm, huh? They have their charm. Yeah. Okay, so wh- like, what do you think it's uh, about Filipinos? Like, it, we're friendly. Are they there? We're very pleasant. Mm-hmm. We're very grateful. We're hardworking. Yeah. We hardly complain. Okay. You know? <laughs> Which is an Asian thing. Which is an Filipino Asian thing. thing. Yeah. It's a value thing. Yeah. We're, we're respectful. Yeah. Just that alone, you're already a winner. Mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Just that alone, you don't have to steal contacts. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. I mean, I know most of the girls who, at, who go... They're actually good people. Yeah. And they should, all of them, like, I'm I'm actually cheering for every single one of them. Oh, that's great. Not for anything. I really am. Mm -hmm. I want us to all be okay and friends. Because I know, because everybody in the circle, we all know each other. We're all, we have friends of friends. They're all nice girls. And I'm really excited for all of them. Because unique opportunities will open up for everyone. Even for the ones that plan to go. Because Filipinos are very charming. That bland. Mm-mm. Okay. We've noticed that you made it a point to always or at least wear a Filipino designer yes. when you're attending um, a fashion week or an event uh, uh, abroad. What has been um, maybe your thought process in choosing Filipino designers? Um, Filipino designers give an extra effort to just shine. Okay. You know? Like, again, going back to we're hardworking. Yeah. We're resilient in a good way. Yeah. Abuse sometimes, yeah, but, but in a good way, a good we way. thrive. Mm-hmm. And it's so different when I wear a Filipino designer. I embrace it because we're all Filipinos and we like to support each other. Yes. Right? But when I walk in an event or a show or anything, somebody will always come up to me and say, who made your dress? 
that it's so beautiful. Yeah. So I love Cheetah Rivera. Yeah. Um, I love, uh, I have so many that I love. Of course, Ivar, Ivar Joey Sirola. Samson, With Michael Leva. Yeah. Like those are like amazing. They, and every time I wear their dresses, like so nice. There's like uh, a point of view. Yeah. And maybe like the craftsmanship yeah. behind it. And I feel like at the same time, they do have their own personalities or yeah. a certain design aesthetic. Exactly. But they sort of also try to... You know, mix it with the yes, you, yes, with, your with the own personality personal style. of who, yeah, yeah. So that's why. So it's like it, they always collaborate with who they're working with or the artist they're. Yeah, but I have to commend you for doing that because I feel like that's a huge responsibility to represent Filipino talent in a global stage. You don't have to do that, you know. But, um, technically, if you if you don't think about it, you don't really. But I've always been somebody that, um, how could I say, that would um, repay the kindness of someone. Mm -hmm. For example, Ivar. Yeah. Ivar made my very first terno. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And I remember he was so nice about it. And when I look back at that time, I wasn't, I don't consider myself whatever, you know, I was just whatever. <laughs> and he was very nice to me. And I'll never forget that. Michael Leva, for example, also personally was there for me when I was down. Mm -hmm. So it's not really like I have to wear it. It's yeah. from my heart yeah. to wear it. You chose to wear them mm -hmm. and, you know, um, show their designs. Yeah. Yeah. Abroad. Yeah. And for other people to see. And yeah. in a way, you're helping them, yeah. you know, get their name out there. Yeah. Right? I guess in yeah. a sense. But yeah. really for me, it makes it flawless and easy to kind of collaborate because they they offer their heart first and yeah. i think that really matters it's yeah. not just a client designer kind of relationship or it's not just their design talent yeah. it's really yeah. like how there's they, care yeah there's and care love. there's a lot of love and yeah. like, they pour in hard work yeah cheetah as well mm -hmm. very, yeah and very feminine pieces Super. yeah that's also sort of yeah. aligned with really some, really yeah talented. Oh, this is an interesting um, question because there's a time or the, it always happens interesting questions. Okay. <laughs> um, that, you know, whatever you wear, um, may it be an accessory or a piece of uh, clothing, it gets sold out during fashion week. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? That's really like... <laughs> they say you're tried and tested. Oh you move God. things. That's really hard to imagine because okay. sometimes like whenever I wear something, I remember it was a... I think it was a Boucheron ring. Uh -huh. and That's then, expensive. That was super expensive. <laughs> I didn't expect that they would buy, you yeah. know? I remember one of my biggest ones was like the YSL shades. Yes, those And if they just know the background story of why I was wearing that. Yes, we they'd... would like to know. <laughs> okay, so I was on a call with, I had two friends on, whatever, and, and I was, I, it was a bad like day. And I, basically I was... I went, I cried a lot. All right. I cried, I cried, I cried. <laughs> and um, my eyes were a little puffy and I was alone during this trip. And I didn't know how else I could make my makeup better. Mm -hmm. Although your, your it worked makeup. naman, but yeah. I wasn't so confident. So I passed by the YSL store the to buy the store. shades because my eyes were puffy. Yeah. And so. then it sold out. Oh, so, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you just like picked out one pair yes, of shades and yes. just like decided I want to wear this. Yeah, yeah. And then without, you know, the intention. Yeah. And it's funny because thanks to you guys, the essay that helped me that day, he he got promoted. Majorly. I would assume yeah, he got he's promoted. Like, he's like still my SA oh, now. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> so Hart, how do you use your uh, influence in your businesses because we do know that you said a while ago that you have to be smart about mm -hmm. you know like everything you do and i'd assume of course like there's a business side to it mm -hmm. and that you also invested in your yeah. own businesses yes so how yes <laughs> um i guess the main remind the biggest reminder of it all is you have to be authentic okay and it has to be really natural when you say that, it means that perfection is not of this world. <laughs> so nobody is perfect. You have to remind that to everyone. When you follow someone, if they make a mistake, no matter how huge the mistake is, you have to understand that nobody's perfect because it's the same thing. How will you believe somebody wearing this really likes this if they pretend to be the nicest person in the room, but they're not? Um, we have to put the masks down. And we have to be our authentic selves. And I feel like that has been like 
the core of how I made it into a business. I'm actually about to release a YouTube series, a 10 episode, mm. and it doesn't get as raw as it will be on the... Oh, wow. You will see everything in okay. how we are yeah. in real life, that's whether exciting. you like it or not. Yeah. But the heart is definitely there. And that's the core of my business is mm. keeping it real, mm -hmm. being yourself. Yeah. Because this is what is what should be emulated. How can you emulate a role model that's expected to be perfect when that does not exist? Mm -hmm. You need someone who is as real as it gets. So if they stumble and they they are able to stand up and carry themselves with grace, that's how I can do it if yeah, I if I stumble in my life. So that's my number one yeah. rule. As authentic as possible. Number two is to really make sure that you connect with the Your people audience. that support you okay. and to be grateful for that. No matter how tired you are, if somebody wants a picture, you take the picture yeah. because they brought you to where you are. Mm -hmm. It's like, mga magulang mo, pag mong kalimutan kung saan ka nanggaling. Yeah. You know, yeah. they were there for you. Even if they, it's, you're aspirational to them and they can't afford certain things, yeah. they gave you that heart. So take a photo with them. You have to be um, really nice and be there. Yes. Yeah. And I guess just be as open as possible to the people that follow you because it's your story that will inspire them. Yeah. And the rest will follow. The rest it's the follow. core. That's the core. Keeping it real. For you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been really effective for you. I've met some of your most loyal fans. Yes. And they've become already a follower of yeah. our brand as well. And, you know, they'd message me on how, you know, you're really genuine and they really, you know, they're so invested in your life. I know. Yeah. It's so cute. And, I, and it's adorable, actually. Yeah. And I find that not a lot of people have that effect or impact on yeah. fans. And that's why kudos to you to, Thanks. you know, like really just um, determining mm -hmm. the core, your mm -hmm. core Thanks. and what works for you and what your purpose is. Yeah. And Heart, I feel like there's a lot of women or the audience, our audience really aspire to be you, is inspired by you. And I hope you'll be able to continue on your storytelling. Thanks. And you continue to inspire a lot of our audience and so mega women out there. So hard with uh, many people aspiring to achieve fashion icon status. I, I know you don't like the, the label, <laughs> but how do you plan to level up your game in the fashion industry? What's next for you? Um... Well, I, like I said earlier, I feel like I've already laid my, the map down um, in front of, you know, my most trusted allies. Yeah. Um, but really, it has a lot to do, again, with going back to just being genuine. Okay. So I have no plans. Like, I'm going to be this. I have to look like this. Yeah. This is my next fashion look. No, it's really according to my life and where oh, life will take now. me. It just so happens that this my life and fashion just goes hand in hand mm -hmm. so it'll always reflect according to where i'm at in my life okay. so there are no plans and i feel like that's what we should remind people um if i know you have to plan out financially the stuff and how to get there because that's the reality of it but you cannot make or plan something out perfectly because it goes back to it's the free flowing it's the nonchalant look that will make you unique and natural that, that will sell. Yeah. So if that's what you want, just be yourself. Mm -hmm. That's it. You, you think this is the formula for you to succeed? This and, is definitely the and formula. And this is like the pillar that you will always go back to. Yes. You... It really is. You can't, when you go to an event, you yeah. can't have like full pack, makeup, yeah. hair, perfect shoes, perfect hands. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. No, it's, it's a mix of the it's a je ne sais quoi kind yeah. what is it kind it's an of effortless thing effortless kind of yes yeah. because you're supposed to meet the fashion world and the reality you have to Balance mix the that. two together because this is what normal people that go don't go to fashion week want to see and this is what will sell Heart, I wanted to say thank you yes. for um, joining us today and accommodating us. I really had a fun conversation with you. I hope you had the same experience. Yes, yes. <laughs> I loved it. And, yeah. you know, I think podcasts are great. So yeah. thank you so much to you guys for creating this platform where, you know, artists and all of us can just be ourselves. And hopefully, um, you know, like 
spark something in somebody's heart out there who's listening right yeah, now. Yeah, for sure. And the audience will, you know, get to know you more and like get uh, a lesson out of our, you know, conversation. Yeah. So thank you so thank much. Thank you so, so much, much We survived our first I podcast. Know. Amazing. I know. And then, Heart, I wanted to ask you, so what is your next move? My next move is a secret, but it is, I'll whisper it. Okay. Make it big. Make it back up. Thank you, Heart. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. And we have flowers from John Robert Flowers. John Robert Flowers. I love flowers. Thank you so much. And I share this with everybody that's listening right now. Thank and to you, you Madame Pina, Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us on the very first episode of The Next Move. This has been your host, P.V. Reyes Isidro. If you enjoyed our conversation and want more updates, subscribe to the Mega Channel.